Welcome to Saver Electrical Box first video series. We'll be focusing on how our products work. This is the third video in our series where we will be talking about how to install the Saver Universal Electrical Box. Here we will show you how to install a junction box on a wall stud. The first step is to mark the cable where it meets the top of the box. This is what the viewing door will look like at the top of the box. The next step is to attach the layout board to the wall stud. An electrician who installs receptacles on a regular basis can use a rolling cart table with the layout board already attached to it for convenience. Step three is to push the cable through the wire connectors or openings that are attached to the top cover of the box. Move only one cable at a time. Do not secure the wires to the connectors at this time. Step four is to lay the wires on the layout board. Lay them as shown in this video. Use the mark you left on the cable at the proper location on the board, as shown with the arrow. Lay the sheathed line on the left side of the board. Now strip the wire coating from the line. It is very important to note here that using the mark allows the proper length of wire needed to install the hub in its correct position inside the junction box. The mark is held here for one or two gang junction box. The mark is held here for the three or four gang box. Bend the wire at this point. The hub being installed is shown here on the board. Use the color chart to cut each wire to its proper length. Notice that the wires are cut after reaching the end of the colored block. The black wire is cut to its proper length. The white wire is cut to its proper length and the ground wire is now cut to its proper length as well. Once a wire or a group of wires is cut to the correct length, remove the coverings on the wires about the length of the color chart, exposing only about one half to three quarters of an inch of the wire tips. Taking one wire at a time, bend the wire at the second position. Push the wire into the hub Look at the window to verify a good electrical connection, then tighten the screw. Do the same with the other wires. Once that cable is installed, install another cable in the same way using a different wire entry port. Step five. Once all of the wires are fastened to the hub, electrical tape or straps are used to hold the wires together and form a single wiring harness. Here you can see the hub and wires in the junction box. Here the top cover is closed. It is important to note that these are models only and are not working prototypes. This is a one piece receptacle board. It plugs into the hub. Electrical code requires different amounts of cubic inches per wire per device in junction boxes. This picture, as well as the following pictures, show how to increase cubic inches in junction boxes so more wires can be installed in our boxes. Once the wires are attached to the hub, the hub and the wiring harness are dropped into the box, placing the top cover on top of the junction box. The top cover is then fastened. 
This can be done in many ways. The cover can be snapped into place. It can be snap locked by itself. It can be snap locked with one or two vertical screws, which would be accessible or have a door connected by a hinge. PVC boxes can have the plastic thinned out for a hinge. PVC or metal boxes can have a simple cover made similar to a battery operated toy where one side gets hooked and the other side gets attached. There are many ways to attach the top cover, some as previously described here, to make a strong non-flexing box. It has been stated that the hub can handle up to nine lines in one junction box. Though it is unlikely that someone will use nine lines at one time, it is possible. I know the first thought that comes to mind is, the code will not allow all those wires in one junction box, but let's rethink that. This video shows the hub by itself with a termination device in front of it. Now if nine cables go through the top cover and all of the wires go to the open area on the left side of the junction box and they become a wiring harness, that wiring harness will use an added, specifically designed trench in the bottom of the junction box. The trench goes along the entire length of the junction box. The harness should have a thickness of about a half an inch, which will only fill up 25% of the trench. Keep in mind that the number 14 wire requires 2.0 cubic inches in the box and the number 12 wire requires 2.25 cubic inches, and four ground wires adds an additional 2.0 or 2.25 cubic inches. The trench adds cubic inches to the box. Also, some of our models add space to the top cover of the box where the wire connectors are, adding additional space, making it code compliant since this device can handle more lines than what is available today on the market. Additionally, the box calculations were determined considering individual wires acting independent of each other while traveling around the interior of the box, all with different destinations and or paths. Some of those destinations and paths lead to the top, bottom, back, or either side of the termination device or a wire nut as examples. Obviously, more space is needed under those circumstances. In our new approach, we simplify this process while adding safety features and we remove the stress on knees and hips. In our device, the wires enter the box and travel together as a wiring harness until the harness reaches the hub. Each wire turns into its own wire entry port also keep in mind, a good portion of each wire is inside the hub, where the hub is already in the calculations. You might be thinking, if I want to disconnect a line, can I get the hub and all the wires out? The answer is, absolutely. Just unscrew the screws that hold the plate that holds the hub in place. But there's no need. Just unscrew the associated set screw and install a patented set screw with a non-conductive tip, which will hold the wire in place, but not make an electrical connection. You can also cut the prong going into the hub. What's great about this process is by cutting the black wire, prong, or changing only one power set screw, the line is still electrically grounded. For safety reasons, any line in a wall, energized or not, should remain grounded.